Hello, Precious Friend. I'm Pastor Danny Davis. I, I want to talk to you today about a very unusual subject. I want to talk to you about uh, anti-prosperity holy jokes. Anti-prosperity holy jokes. Recently, I, I did an experiment. I, I filmed a seven-minute teaching on prosperity where I just went through and shared scriptures out of the book of Mark chapter 10 about the rich young ruler and the hundredfold return. Never asked for a dime. I want to make that very clear before I say anything else. I never mentioned money personally. I didn't ask for any money. I, I just taught on prosperity and I left a comment section after on the World Wide Web so I could see what kind of reaction I would get by going directly to the Word of God and teaching on prosperity. And I was almost astounded the results I got from anti-prosperity Holy Joes in the body of Christ. Now you need to understand something as, as I begin teaching today. The evangelical church world is divided almost equally, 50% to 50%, kind of like Democrats and Republicans in the political world in the United States of America. The church world is divided almost equally between those who believe in prosperity and those who think it's almost a sin to even mention money in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, the evangelical church world is 50-50 on this, and so I've been talking about it some on, uh, recently in my teachings. And today I want to hit it real hard. I want to talk about anti-prosperity holy jokes. In the experiment where I taught seven minutes on prosperity and left a comment section after, I was almost shocked at the comments that I got, just specifically taking scriptures as a pastor of the gospel and teaching a little bit on prosperity for seven minutes. Uh, I started seeing words all over the place in the comments section. You're a false prophet. Uh, I hope you burn in hell. Uh, one so-called Christian brother told me, he said, do us all a favor, go to the dollar store and buy a rope and go in a closet and hang yourself. Uh, and th this is the type of comments, hateful comments, that I received from so-called Christians uh, after I taught a little bit on prosperity for seven minutes to be exact. So I want to come back today and talk to you a little bit more about what the Bible says about money. We need to know what the Bible says about money. And I especially want to talk to you anti-prosperity holy Joes out there. The first thing I want to tell you is that money and possessions, in other words, when you think of possessions, Jesus said you have to have clothes on your back, you know, you have to feed your family, uh, you have to have a roof over your head. If you live in the 21st century, you have to have a car to drive or a way to get around. Um, you know, you've, you, you've got to have uh, uh, money for, uh, well, a, a, whole, like a whole list of things. Money and possessions. The Bible talks about money and possessions more than any other topic in the Scripture. You would be shocked to know that over 2,350 times the Bible talks about money and possessions. It's the number one most talked about topic in the Scripture. You would also be shocked to know that the second most talked about topic in the scripture is love, and it's only mentioned 300 times in all 66 books of the Bible. So uh, money and possessions are mentioned almost, well, over 400% more than the second most popular topic, love is. And uh, in the Old Testament, money is referred to as the mammon of man. Jesus referred to it that way. In other words, it's the things that we need daily. And I want to I want to mention a little something about money before I say anything else. I would like to mention to you that without money, you cannot help your church. I'd like to also mention to you that without money, you can't help a needy family member if they get a hold of you and tell you they're going broke. I think I'd also like to mention that without money, you can't help orphans in other countries and needy children that are starving to death throughout the world. Without money, you really can't do much of anything that's why Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes, money answers all things. Uh, without money, your hands are tied. And so this is why I believe the Bible talks so much about money. It talks about it more than any other subject. Over 2,350 times the scripture makes references to money. 500 verses in the Bible reference prayer. 500 verses in the Bible reference faith. And over 2,000 verses in the Bible reference money. Now let me share a scripture with you. It's found in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, 
For it is written, Cursed is he that hangeth on the tree. That's referring to Christ going to Calvary. And what was the curse of the law? Do you know? You need to know. The curse of the law was poverty, sickness, and eternal death, which means losing your soul in hell. Christ has redeemed us from eternal damnation. Christ has redeemed us from sickness. And Christ has redeemed us from poverty. Why else would the Bible speak more about money and possessions than any, any other topic? I'm going to tell you something that will really blow your mind. 15% of everything Jesus ever taught was about money and about possessions. More than, than anything else Jesus taught, 15% of all of his messages, all of his teachings pertain to money. Now, did you know that is more than twice as much as hell and eternity combined. Jesus talked as much about, more about money than he did about hell and eternity combined. Well, uh, I just wanna say this for all of you anti-prosperity holy Joes out there, I hope I make you mad uh, because you certainly get belligerent whenever money is mentioned. Uh, it, it, it seems to me like one of the greatest tricks the devil ever played on the body of Christ is to cause people to think that, well, I'm just supposed to be saved, and then after I get saved, I'm not to think about money because uh, I'm a Christian now and I'll get my mansion when I get to heaven, so I don't need to be an entrepreneur. I don't, I don't need to build a business. I don't think about God. I shouldn't think about God causing me to succeed. That is one of the greatest tricks the devil ever pulled on the church is to, is to cause people to get so caught up in stinking thinking that they don't even realize that money is the tool that God has made available to the church to win a lost and dying world and that God wants you to have money. Well, I'm convinced of it. I'm a prosperity preacher. And if I made you mad, I just have one thing to say about that today. Thank you.